Um, okay, so you said we're going to do today, we're doing the um, transition sixth and ninth grade. Correct. And then web and link, because that's probably for the sixth and ninth grade. Okay, perfect. I love it. Let's go. All right. So I just wanted to start by sharing some information on the process that we have used as we've continued to grow our sixth grade transition. This year, we had eight items for the sixth grade transition, um, eight kind of opportunities to support both building learner comfort with the building and with each other, providing information to families and sharing um, what the middle school is about and giving opportunities for people to come into the building and kind of get familiar that way as well. So we started back in June with the sixth grade step up day when all of the fifth graders came with their fifth grade teachers. Um, we had the morning time where they met with all of their sixth grade teachers, got to see their classrooms, um, got to do some activities and things with each other. We also use that as an opportunity to have the middle school band and chorus kind of present and talk about how learners can gain access to that. So that was a big success that was back in June. And that's one of our kind of annual things we've done. In July, we sent a family information letter that had some basic information about the middle school, um, how things work, what sorts of things to expect, as well as a family checklist that had just basic things that have to get done before middle school starts. And that checklist had things like making sure you get another physical because in sixth and ninth grade, you have to get those um, redone, reminding families to sign up for sports and athletics if they want and activities if they wanted to do that. Just basic things to help families kind of know um, what to get done as, as we get closer to school. We offered for the first time a fifth grade transition camp this year, which was open to all of the fifth graders at JGS and RMS. And it was a week by week sign up process. So kids could come for as many weeks as they wanted to. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those camps a little further down. And then we offered three distinct forms uh, and information nights this year about more specific topics than we've done in the past. So we did have a general information Q&A session in July, which was attended in person by some families and is all, was also recorded and will get sent out as a batch with the other ones. We had a, in the end of July, a forum about navigating middle school, which was about kind of the resources, um, understanding some of the, the changes that, that go on with learners peer groups. We did a little bit about um, bullying and peer conflict and what those kind of look like and how we can support resolution of those, really just to help families feel comfortable um, accessing support and knowing what to expect for that in middle school. And then the last one in August was centered around academics what the academic picture looks like in middle school, the types of learning to expect, um, what rigor means to us, things like that, as well as opportunities that middle schoolers will have for things like clubs, athletics, and involvement with the community that is different from what they would expect in elementary school. We had our family welcome barbecue just last week. Um, that's an annual fifth grade family event that's usually very well attended. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Upcoming at the end of August is the sixth grade orientation, which is when we invite all of the sixth graders to come in as part of web. And um, Heather will talk about that in a little bit. This year, thanks to a grant, we have a brand new experience for this particular group. They're going to be going to the Ferry Beach Ecology School for a two night, two night, three day um, sort of camp experience as a whole class with their teachers to again, bond together, do some scientific inquiry, interact with the beach and um, learn some ecology lessons and hopefully help them to really gel closely as a class and, and bridge some of that Jaffrey and Ringe um, disconnect that, that happens at the beginning of sixth grade. And then of course we have the web program, which Heather's gonna talk about that lasts for the whole school year. So we have a pretty robust um, sequence of things that we, we do as we've continued to add, again, designed to build family comfort, learner comfort, share knowledge about what goes on in the middle school and provide lots of opportunities for the sixth graders to come together and form a community. Very quickly, our step up day again was focused around three things, touring Conant Middle um, and getting to know the teachers and then also meeting their new classmates. Our transition camp, these are some pictures of one of the cornucopia day visits um, that we had in this particular picture, the cornucopia project had come in brought some farm to table stuff from their local farm and taught the learners how to turn farm vegetables. And I think this one was them doing salsa and they made homemade um, in the far right. They're making homemade zucchini fritters to put the salsa on, but the, they came in and did all this sort of hands-on local stuff with the goal being to bring these learners together and give them something exciting to share. And that's really what the transition camp focused on. It was really focused on social connections, 
building comfort with learners. Um, we brought a guest speaker with exciting things in every single week. The Harris Center brought in their, um, what do they call? It was falconry, but what do they call somebody who does falconry? Falconer? I don't know. They brought him in and he brought his big falcons in and um, they did some demonstrations in the classroom, then went outside and did some demonstrations. The learners got to hold the giant falcon on their arm. And it was an opportunity again for some different learning. The kids were all sitting together, interacting with each other. And it was high excitement that they kept talking about over and over again for the rest of that week. We had a field trip to the Cornucopia Projects farm one week um, to go to, again together as a group do some different types of learning, but have an experience that they could share that they all came back and were, again, bringing the food that they had picked from the farm. They were very excited to have had that, that time together. And then the Cornucopia Project came to other weeks to do stuff on our site. They also took some walking field trips together. Um, they went to the Rails to Trails one week and went down into Children's Woods and did some stuff together down there for some hands-on so, sort of ecological learning in, in the woods. They went down to the beach two weeks of the of the experience. So the idea here wasn't academic focused. It was social community building and comfort focused. And we had, which is roughly how the breakdown should be, about 55% of the kids who came were from Ringe and about 45% were from Jaffrey, which roughly mirrors, oddly enough, um, what we typically get in terms of the population of the range class and the Jaffrey class. And overall, it was just over 40 learners this year, which for the first year is not bad. Um, we would obviously love to get all of the fifth graders doing this. We had about seven learners, it's either seven or eight, who had done one week and then at the end of the week said, can we do another week and kept signing up over and over again. Um, so it was overall a very good experience and one that we want to keep building on now that we have this foundation for future years. So was it Monday through Friday? It was the same as the other so summer programs. It was Tuesday, uh, sorry, Monday through Thursday. And and what time was it? Um, it was 8.30 to 12. Cool. And at the same time that this was going on, we had our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade summer programs, but those are much more academic focused. Mm -hmm. Just a little more info on our family barbecue. Um, we invite all of the incoming sixth graders as well as their families to come. And we always get a lot of siblings who come, which is nice because sometimes it's older siblings who can help the, the new sixth graders kind of build that comfort while they're here. Sometimes it's youngers. Um, our teachers typically come to this event. The administration steps back in this one. This is us cooking the food and then making sure that the environment is set. And then um, the big focus is families, staff, and learners, especially from the two towns, having a chance to mingle here at school. And we always set out games and things like that. Um, our activities director, Ms. Lindstad, was running around making activities happen during this time frame. We put up our big new Conan backdrop that we got for free as part of our um, branding process. And kids were taking Polaroid snapshots together and with a little hashtag on it. It was a fun little thing. But again, the idea was just getting them here together, comfortable, giving them a chance to see the school, ask questions. And we had about 95 um, people in attendance for that event, which again, was very good. How about how many kids are coming as sixth graders? Do you know? We have 93 incoming sixth graders. Okay. So uh, of so the, the six- five was like people. Correct. Okay. Of the sixth graders, this represented, I want to say 62 or 63 unique sixth grade learners. So it was a good chunk of the class, but it wasn't everybody. Yeah, yep. And then the last thing I'll talk about before um, we move to ninth grade and then Heather, our orientation will be run by the web leaders. Again, the goal of that is to build a year long relationship with older learners and gain comfort with the new school. And I won't, I won't I'll ran on Heather's parade with that. And then the last thing I'll talk about quickly is the ninth grade transition. Less robust than the sixth grade transition because obviously our ninth graders have been in the same school for for three years, but it is still important to recognize the distinction between middle school and high school. And so we do still have some very specific things we do with them. One is a, a very um, specific welcome kind of information material that gets sent to ninth graders. Same thing, welcome to high school. Here's what's different. Here's what you should expect. We had our family information night for the ninth grade um, group last night. And that was also recorded. Again, just general information, what's different about high school, um, how, do, how do we build independence and things like that. And then we have our freshman orientation, which I'll let Heather talk a little bit about, which is paired with the link crew. So now it's all you. Um, so Web and Link, and I, I go back a little bit, you know, uh, when I first started, we kind of called it um, Orioles Outreach. Um, but the web and link is 
based on the the boomerang project um i've been i've gone to the training um uh, rachel sammy leonard went and laura harding and laura harding last year ran the web web crew um i'll oversee it and i will train the teachers um to become advisors and whatnot but this starts in actually in the spring of 2023, right? And we send out um, requests from to all teachers um, if it for the 11th and 12th graders. Um, teachers nominate uh, students, and the students also apply though that that want to do it. And we do the same thing for their the seventh graders um, that are going to be eighth graders. So um, the funny part is the, and it's totally different, right? The 11th and 12th graders, they know it's coming. They're getting used to it. They want to be a part of it and things come in. The seventh graders, when you introduce something like that, like, can I really be a leader? They're kind of like, is this just a fun activity and, and what are we doing? But when you sit down and so then we have a spring meeting with them um, and we talk about it, uh, confirm that they can be available for the trainings. And I think that that's the biggest commitment is that the trainings will come up. Uh, we'll do link uh, Monday and Tuesday of next week. And then web leaders will come in on Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. The biggest thing about this in the leadership is getting them to understand that what leadership is and really leadership and, and changing your culture or creating the best culture um, is about them learning people's names, um, being able to say hello and get themselves away from their phones. And so they, they learn that in the trainings like that, oh boy, this, this is going to be difficult because even though you, you said hello, you have to give of yourself. And I think that that's the biggest thing about leadership and trying to get students to understand that the hello, but being present, right, is that you are present for that person and that they can trust you. Um, and that's so when we're doing these two half day um, trainings with the the leaders, it really is great for them for self-reflection and especially the 11th and 12th graders, because I think it gives them a golden opportunity to then know that they're going to be able to transition when they graduate, that they can be leaders or move on and be confident in themselves and in, in what they're doing. For our eighth graders, hopefully it's the same thing. And, and so that next year we'll see a difference when they become ninth graders, they'll know what the program is about, but they'll also um, want to be a part of it. And what this does for any culture, and certainly it works if we're sharing the same building, is creating that culture of we're going to have a lot of different people in our building. We're going to have a lot of different students, new people come in. But even if they're different, we're all still under the same roof. And how can we all, you know, have build a culture that's beneficial for everybody and every type of person? So, um, so we will do the orientation um, next week with the half days. Um, once that's established, then they technically, um, yes, I'll lead it um from the hello and and all the the little things but in truth we then have two link leaders or two web leaders running a group of 10 to 12 kids and that's their group and that's who they're going to establish um the relationship with and the activities that we're teaching are not activities slash competition games, right? They're activities where there's a lot of talking, a lot of giving of each other so that you remember things. And one of the programs, and I love it, and I, I do it with everybody now, is um, that everybody wants to be acknowledged by their name, right? And there's one of the, it's telling why you have your name or what you want to be called, because that's one of those things, right? That is so hard when kids get into class and you know it, the shy ones won't say their name if the teacher said it wrong. You know, they kind of sit back, but then they have this fear in class, like that's not my name, you know? Mm -hmm. And through this orientation and when they're talking, that's what our, our web leaders and our link leaders will be saying, like, how do you want to be recognized? And and we all we all do want it. I mean, I can sit here and tell all of you that 
sometimes when I was a coach, just being called coach was just like, I could tell that person had no idea what my name was. <laughs> they're just looking and they're doing the high coach. And so in our hallways, it makes a huge difference when a older classman can upperclassman can say, hi, David. And that that student can look and be like, somebody knows who I am. And that's what this is really all, all about, right? But getting our leaders to then get that out of sixth graders or getting it out of the ninth graders that hold on, maybe you've been sitting back and you want to, you like your nickname or you don't like your nickname and somebody gave you that nickname and being able to say, that's not really who I am. That's not what I, that's not my name. Um, and I, I mean, I, I know that I grew up with the name that there was really no real short Nesta Heather, but like, I'm sure David with Dave or David, there's always that thing. And, and, and teaching these kids and having an orientation and having two upperclassmen say, it's okay to tell us what your name is so that they feel comfortable through that, that whole thing. So the orientation though, we'll do the same thing. Um, making sure that they know the activities, how to present, um, allowing the sixth graders, allowing the ninth graders to know that they'll always have a voice, um, that they have upperclassmen and that's who they can relate to. The overall long-term goals though, are going to be monthly meetings, um, where the mentors or the leaders, link leaders or web leaders go in and work with their, their group and their group meeting will be 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Sometimes during the month, and there'll probably be three meetings a month. One meeting for, could be just the leaders working with the advisors and planning out that month and what they're going to present that day um, or two weeks from then. And when they get into the classroom with their groups, a lot of that is too. And I've talked to Kim Baker about it is, you know, the academics when they're at the eighth graders or the upper class teaching study skills or how to study or what are they missing in academics and making sure that these uh, students know how to ask questions to teachers or saying, by the way, I'm here for you. If you need help in math, I can help you with math if you're struggling. So again, keep in mind that the leaders, it's two to 10. And so they should be able to handle it like, oh, you're all struggling with this math thing. Let's just, that'll be our group project. You know, how do we get through it together and those kind of things. And so the academic part will be there for them and it's always nice as an eighth grade when an eighth grader says, oh, I struggled with that, but this is how I learned it, you know, and just gives them that sense of pride. The social, and I thought last year, everybody did a great part of that. The goal for the leaders is to say, hey, I can't wait to meet you at the school dance or, hey, we're all going down to a soccer game or we're all going to harvest us. Um the web group did a great job last year. I can tell you those dances were so well attended um, that it was just off the charts. Um, and it was so interesting that the sixth graders last year even wrote thank you notes to the eighth graders sometimes about like, by the way, thank you for being in the classroom or thank you for the organizing and helping organize the school dance and those kind of things. Cause it just made them feel like at a dance, they also knew somebody and the upperclassmen, and we all can get to it. The upperclassmen were not going to be bullying. And, you know, that is one of those things that, you know, or they should be the ones stopping them bullying. And that's a hard thing for leaders, right? That they are going to have to be like, oh, no, listen, this isn't going to be it. But it, that they're the ones that are going to control, obviously, the culture. Um, and then leader initiated contact. I kind of said that the year long thing is finding those kids that need a little more hello in the in the, the hallways um asking them to you know sit down and have lunch and and do different things with them because i think the leaders know it they know who needs a little bit more attention than somebody else but also on the flip side there has to be a you know a collaboration for the teachers to also say hey to the eighth graders um and from the sixth grade, and it's going to be great with Erica Jordan as a sixth grade teacher, knowing that and being able to tell our eighth graders too, like, hey, this is what the whole class is kind of feeling or different things. And we'll build those monthly things based on that kind of information and feedback for the eighth graders. And we'll continue to train the eighth graders on 
on how to do that. You know, they're not just going to go in and be like, oh, yeah, I know what to do. Um, so that's why we'll have three meetings pretty much a month. One will be advisors with the leaders. And then it could take two uh, last year with the eighth graders. It's, it's a little easier, obviously, with 11th and 12th graders. The eighth graders, sometimes they needed two sessions to kind of learn the activities and how they were going to present. And so it was more advisor leaders twice, and then just going in and seeing the sixth graders uh, once a month. So that kind of varies on, on how the program is, is going and what's going on. Um, I did mention um, the Boomerang Project, and, and they do have a lot of statistics on um, how it has changed uh, across the country, uh, the whole bullying and, and those kind of things. But again, it, it is teaching our leaders to, to be the not being bystanders to be upstanders. And, and that is, that's a hard thing um, because you don't want to feel like um, you're overstepping. And again, that's why I say it has to be a collaboration because I think teachers could use, will be able to use the web leaders and link leaders more to their, their capabilities. And when teachers are giving the leaders that voice to say, hey, listen, I know you can get to that ninth grade student better than I can. That is a reality. Mm -hmm. Students can talk to each other a little bit more. Um, we all know it in, in sports too, that we would like to have, make sure that our captains can, can really bring young people along, right? That they're not just there on the sidelines, that they, they should be participating. And so the web group, uh, the link group, that's kind of that same thing, right? You're you don't have to sit here and say, oh, I'm a sixth grader. And I can't wait to be a seventh grader. We want them to say, I'm a sixth grader now and this school is cool and I can I can fit in. Ninth graders, I'm here. I'm a part of it. And when you know an upperclassman or they're saying hi, that, that pre precludes any of that, I don't belong, right? And again, when we talk about the link crew, we want to make sure that our ninth graders know how to have success in the classroom, because that is the biggest thing. The ninth graders, that's where kids fall through the cracks, cracks academically. And that is what this whole thing is all about and trying to make sure that they don't and that they have somebody that they can ask questions. And again, I've seen it last year went well where ninth graders were going to the leaders and the leaders could go to the teachers that they already knew and be like in reverse, right? Hey, by the way, so-and-so is struggling in your class because of this, you know, and kind of advocate for them. So um, that's really what both programs are about. Um, and I, I have to say again, um, it's really great. The, the students that are going to be in it, it's a very diverse group too. And that's, that's the positive thing too. It's not the same people that sign up for to be our just a, you know, part of student government or just the athletes and those kind of things. It's a very diverse group in that respect. More to it. I'll ask my usual question. Um, I know you're very enthusiastic about this and it's probably worked lots of other places, but how are you going to measure your success? How are you going to know what this program works? Well, again, we used it last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I've talked to, to Kim Baker and those kind of things. This is one of those things that we just really need to continue with and, and, and with David is, and Rachel, um, of just watching, um, statistically, right. Um, how are our ninth graders doing academically? Um, what is their attendance, um, you know, enrollment, those kind of things, are they staying with it? Attendance is a big thing, as you know, for young people that are transitioning sixth graders, ninth graders, are they coming to school because they feel comfortable, they feel safe, and they, they feel like they, they belong and they, they trust that uh, they're going to have success? So these are, one, we could probably base a little bit on last year, but these are those numbers that we got to keep following. So last year was our first official year of doing it. Um, and I would say, though, too, I mean, obviously we have truancy way we can follow that we can follow there's a lot obvious. i would say this is best measured with a lot of lagging indicators like yeah. like what you like what heather was saying the attendance pieces looking at um, instances of bullying for example is a great one because a lot of what this program is supposed to help prevent is a flare-up of some of those transitional kind of behaviors in ninth grade so we 
as we're looking at things like bullying statistics, issues of disruptive behaviors or things that are designed to have learners kind of remove themselves from class, attendance is a big one. Academic data, you could somewhat look at with this, but this isn't really geared towards right. academic safety. This is more physical, I'm in the building, connected safety. So we look at a lot, a lot of lagging indicators, particularly for link. We've considered doing some surveying of ninth graders, but that can be hard in a transition year because again, the comfort and honesty with those surveys can be really difficult to measure. The sixth grade one this year, because of the field trip that we're taking with the grant, we are actually going to be collecting some statistical data through some surveys. Again, I'm not sure how much that will help us with web, but it could give us some indication of a before and after with, with that mentoring process. But I think the best data for this is those lagging indicators of attendance and discipline and um, school kind of culture stuff. Is there a way to see how many of them actually use those mentors? Is there a way to see like, um, mm. I don't know if you could pull or talk to the the leaders and just, you know, hey, how many times have kids come to you? Or do you right. see that these kids are using you? Or do you th see that they're just like, yeah, I'm good. I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> like just to see if they're well, like, because it, it is hard to gauge too in that respect, because you don't know what a hello in a hall hallway adds up to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and again, I've said to our, especially our link leaders, they're not always going to just come up to you and say thank you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, but to see their success is, hey, I can't wait to get to 10th grade. And another value to it is once we get it going, how many ninth graders say as 11th graders, this is why I applied, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I did this because, and you see that a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I did this because there was Kim. I remember Kim helping me as a ninth grader and I want to give back. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, we're still not there yet, right? Because we've only run it really officially one year, but that is really where it's at is, mm -hmm. did this make a difference for them? And I've said that to the link leader. They're like, are we doing the good job? We ran a, they ran a Valentine's Day thing where it was all ninth graders. You would have thought it was like the biggest party they ever had, right? And it was after, it was just at the end of the school, but with cake and talking and playing games. And it really was like, hey, this is all right, because it was in February, right? And there, you know what I mean? There was this enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. So you knew that they were touching base. But it was also really cool for the ninth graders to be like, hey, there you are, you know, in, in a time where they all are feeling good about it. Um, so I think there's those kind of indicators. But again, um, we'll watch it with the culture, the the bullying, how engaged people are in the hallways. Um, I know that that's just visual, but it is a difference. You can tell a hallway when, especially ninth graders, when they're picking their heads up and their shoulders are back and they're just not walk in the hallways, you know, and, and avoiding eye contact mm -hmm. with people. And that's, that's a big difference, but, um, but it will do eventually, Charlie, like I said, when people know like, Hey, it's coming and I want to sign up because it helped me. I think those are going to be the biggest things, but Kim, you on that note, we could do a survey at the end of the year. Even if you did it like halfway through the year, just right. thinking even in mentor yeah. class and just asking the sixth graders and ninth graders, not even the mentor, the, the leaders, but the kids and be like, how many times have you seen this? Or, hey, we did this dance. How many of you attended and, and loved it? Like, what right. did you think? You I like the idea of that person. kind of a survey because yes. there's already, they're comfortable enough to yeah. kind of give us good feedback at that point. Right. Absolutely. I actually think that could be really beneficial. Yeah. I like that idea a lot. Yep. And yep. I think too, you'll get some honesty with like a email survey where they're like, oh yeah, I'll tell you how it was. You yeah. know what That's I mean? Right. right. Yep. By then they're acclimated and things like that. And then there's some good quantitative data or even then too. they might even be like, I didn't even know that was from the leaders. Right. And then they'll be more aware. Right. Yep, that's yeah, a that's good cool. idea. Yep. yep. One thing I'm kind of looking for with both web and link this year, but in particular link is seeing the, watching the quality and number of um, events that they kind of advocate to put on for their charges, for lack of a better term. So last year, the, the link crew did probably three or four things over the course of the year that they specifically said, Hey, we think the ninth graders need this based on what we're doing. I'd like to see more of that, but that will, if, when I see that, that tells me that there is some engagement going on there. And I definitely am hoping to see more of that with the um, web group this year. Last year was the first year and there was definitely a little bit more nervousness for the eighth graders 
to go to Miss Linstad or to myself and say, hey, we want to do this with the sixth graders. But when that happens more regularly, that's also another data point that's like, yeah, yeah. they're talking to their charges, they're aware of what they need, and they're seeing themselves as leaders. Mm -hmm. So that's in addition to doing like a mid or late year survey, I think that's another really good kind of on the fly data point we can collect. Right. One thing we're going to be looking at in particular for the sixth grade transition this year is looking at collecting some additional data. Um, and I've been talking with Juno a little bit about possibly a, a communications committee overlap in addition to just some school folks. But we want to, at this point where we've built so many opportunities and there's so many overlapping pieces, we want to make sure that these are landing and that families are perceiving that they're getting enough of what they need before we either layer more on or make adjustments. Mm -hmm. So one thing I would anticipate being able to come back to the education committee with later this year, pro probably closer to spring, would be some survey information and other data from families of the current this year's sixth grade group, as well as kind of anticipation data from next year's sixth grade parents of what they would like to see, what they're feeling like worked and things like that. So we can continue to grow that sixth grade program. The ninth grade transition is very important, but I think the sixth grade is even more obviously critical in our case. We always talk about um, kind of the push out and stuff. How did you guys get word out that well, the stuff that you had talked mm -hmm. about, how did you get word out? And do you feel like there are things that you could have done to get more word out? Yeah. And then for that too, you know, how do you, how are you going to get word out to kids? Like here's web and link, here's where you can find them or here's what will happen so that you can utilize them. So in terms of um, advertising, the things that we were doing, we sent out a, a big one, again, a big letter by us mail and also email that had all these dates kind mm -hmm. of highlighted what the events were about. Um, with each one of these, Juno had posted on the Facebook page and website, kind of, again, the, the snapshot of what was up and coming. As we got closer to the events, I typically would send a reminder email to all the families um, through Alma, hey, this is coming up, here's where it's located, just a reminder that this event's coming up. Yeah. Um, the only, the one thing I really wish we could do, and I know that um, Juno on the communication side has been working on this, is some more use of the school messenger platform. It'd be nice if, and that's a, my understanding is at some point, this is likely to be a thing that I could just send out a phone call just to the ninth grade families mm. and say, okay, this is an event for you coming up. Um, that's the biggest gap I feel like right now, because we're kind of covering email, covering us mail, we're covering uh, Facebook, we're covering the website, but there are some people who don't really do any of that. And a phone call is like the last way to kind of get them. Phone call or text or something, right? Ex yeah. Exactly, yeah, yes. And favorite, I think it's I possibly has both options. Yeah, right? so what we're trying to move toward, and I'm hoping to meet with administration in the next couple of weeks, it's dependent upon when we can actually roll it out. Um, so School Messenger, we've been using for a really long time, but we've been vastly underutilizing it. We've only been using it for the purpose of all calls. It's only at a superintendent level. Um, I want to get it in the hands of each school. Um, you know, we're doing all this great work with Alma to turn into a guardian model for data, which should be, you know, live shortly if it's not already. Um, and what that's going to do is allow, it would allow, say, David eventually to go into school messenger and say, I just want to reach out to sixth grade parents. And it's going to pull all that data automatically through Alma because Alma will feed into school messenger. Um, but the additional things we want to do is over the summer, they revamped the process that you can use for broadcasting. Whereas before you had to do like a broadcast for each individual thing that you wanted to do. Now say David has a reminder that he wants to send out. He can type out his message in school messenger. It can pop. We're going to allow parents to um, select their preferences for communication. So you don't want phone calls. You just want text messages. So you want everything. Parent will be able to go into a portal, say, I want X, Y, and Z. For my preferences, David will send out a message. He can select email, text, and an all call, in a um, voice call. And a parent is going to receive whatever messaging they want. If they want all three things, they can get them. If they just want one, it'll go that way. So it'll, it'll allow our administrators a greater level of detail in picking who they want to send things to. It will allow um, parents to have a greater level of notification and how they want to receive information. And then, like I said, David, for example, would be able to do all the messaging in one go instead of having to type it into a bunch of different locations, send it out that way. Um, the only thing that, you know, a, a principal would have to do is if they wanted to not have a like a robotic voice read the message, 
um, you'd be able to, you know, say your message into the broadcast. But before the hard part was that you'd have to actually put in a phone number and it would call a phone and you'd have to answer the phone, then record your message into the phone. Then it would transfer it into the broadcast. Now you can just click a button on the screen. You can report uh, record it into your computer and then it's just nice and clean in one system. So um, I'm waiting to hear back from School Messenger as to when we can get this new updated easier interface. Um, it sounds like in the next couple of weeks or so, they rolled it out in July, but they're rolling it out for every single customer they have. And they're, you know, the largest company doing this in the United States and I believe Canada. Um, so I'm as soon as that happens, we'll make it go live. We'll get training for our administrators. Eventually, we're going to roll in a staff piece to this as well, which means we'll essentially do what we did with Alma, only find a system for the staff, get that information set up correctly so that David could additionally say, I want to reach out to sixth grade um, families and my corresponding staff members um, instead of having to create like a Google list or create like some other way to reach out to the, those folks. So we have this really good platform and we're just trying to consolidate everything so that people can selectively pick out who they need to or do a big wide broadcast. Yep. So that's what I need to, that would be as, the better. As far as communication, <laughs> so for, for web and link, we've sent out the invitations to orientation, right? So every ninth grader, every sixth grader, and then the last day of training. So on Tuesday and then Thursday, the students actually call their group too and introduce themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they, we've done it. Um, like I said, we've been officially link and web after the training last year, but we did Orioles outreach. Um, the high schoolers, I can tell you like the first call, they're like, what am I saying? And those kind of things. But then all of a sudden they get right into it. And if they connect with the students, it, they've, they've enjoyed doing it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just for them too. It's, it's learning how to make a phone call and network and, and be like, oh, I can make this call. So um, so they will be making the phone calls as well um, to and, and typically they're calling the parents phone numbers because that's that's what we have. But uh, but they are reaching out and making sure that there's an invite mm -hmm. to it. Um, so that that and again, can, they'll be going to those mentor groups at least once a month so that they'll know who their who the, who their team is. And I would call it more of a team because I think even the leaders will figure out like, hey, this is our group, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of things we could do. Uh, we don't charge for anything, but I, you know, in my own little world, and I, everything merges. Like I had a little sports marketing thing, but they want to figure out like how to figure out if your team showed up for a soccer game. You know what I mean? So we could chart that too. Like, how are they integrating, right? And you said about survey, but like, if David and I have a team, we'll be like, oh my god, we have to go to this soccer game, right? Together. Cheer them on, cheer them on, like, right? Oh, and so then you're you're like, yeah, a team in mm -hmm. in in moving in that direction. So cool. that might be something like you say. Um, though, if they go to enough games, I mean, that's such a college thing. If you go to enough games, like you get so many credits, <laughs> you get a free T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, so it will be, I mean, obviously those, those kind of things. And everybody knows that the, the Harvest Fest is really obviously taken yeah. off and we want people to be a part of it. Yep. Yeah. The other thing that I, I've done the last two summers and I'll do it again this summer is taken all of the summer forms that we do and I batch them together and send them out to families to say, you know, in case you couldn't come to a forum, here's the three um, forums that we held and here's the video link so mm -hmm. that families can go and watch it if there's something that they wanted to particularly yeah, so those are all done. So I just yep. have to yep. grab the video, edit them. So I'm hoping that'll take less than a week because it's four of them. So mm -hmm. excellent. That's it. I think that's it. I, I think our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, uh, sorry, Thursday, September 14th. And we would be back to our normal start time of 4 30. Mm -hmm. um, and back in the middle high school library classroom. Is there any particular topic that um, the board members would like to have presented on? And usually we try to rotate to elementary. The second, in a three month cycle, we usually like right. to do elementary in the middle. But is there anything in particular that you want to hear from administrators or others? 
think so. A lot of my notes are on MT, whatever. <laughs> and that is not until December again. I think we decided, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is good, but I'm like trying to go back to be like, okay, what did we really want to hear more about? And I was like, ah, we are pretty heavy on this stuff. Well, September 14th? Yeah. Yep. Maybe we can hear an update on how everything did and how we started well and like I said, how really the equipments were, how the facilities working, how the classrooms are working, how our staffing is working. What kind of stuff. So we'll we'll plan a just a general agenda for yeah, all sure. the schools about start of school facility updates, how the first couple of days have gone. How did Ferry uh, Beach go? How Ferry Beach? Oh yeah, right, because it'll be after that Ferry Beach. Yep, excellent. It's an amazing program. Yeah, I went my first years teaching <clears throat> as a teacher. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was so awesome. <laughs> it is tricky like that. Hi, welcome as a sixth grader. Let's take off and parents and kids are all like <laughs> but then oh my gosh yeah so amazing yeah the, it, the, it's just it's the staff phenomenal. is really excited they they see the value in it some of them at other schools have taken groups oh yeah and they're, they're just really looking forward to that bonding but also where we have a big stem focus in our school this is a great way to lay that foundation for stem and, and mm -hmm. ecology on top of it so it's yeah. gonna be great so hands-on i mean it's just it's so fun yeah it's a really good time I'm happy for them that they get to go. I'm sad my kids all missed it. And it stopped like the year my daughter came in and then it started the, my last kids leaving and starting. Yeah. <laughs>